So we're still in the series um, titled The Intersection, and uh, we're going to read Mark chapter 5, verse 22, going all the way to verse uh, 24, then we're going, to go, we're going to skip and go to verse 35, and then read down to 42. So it's a lengthy reading, so I'm praying that you indulge me even as we read tonight. So the Bible says, Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. Verse 23 says, He pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death, but come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed, and she will live. Verse 35. While Jesus was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher anymore? Verse 36, the Bible continues to say, overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, don't be afraid, just believe. Verse 37, he did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. 38. We're going all the way to 42. 38. When they came to the house of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. And he said, he went in and said to them, Why all this commotion? The child is not dead, but asleep. I want us to read 40 together. 40 says, He took, yeah. Yeah, when the child was. And verse 42 tells us that immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. Father, thank you for your word tonight. Even as we look into your word, we pray that may give us understanding um, that um, my, my mouth may be like a tongue, a tongue of, a, a pen of, a, of a, skilled, a skillful writer. And that um, people's hearts be receptive to your word today. In just name, I pray. Amen. Before you take your seat, I want to give you to fist bump your neighbor and tell them, I have rules for engagement. Take your seats in the beautiful house of the Lord. So by way of starting um, tonight, um, even as we continue this series, um, The Intersection, a title of today's um, teaching or conversation is Rules for Engagement. Rules for Engagement. And as we may be aware, Every place has got its rules. Every place has got its protocols. And um, the road also has what we call the, the highway code. So without the highway code, uh, we would not know how to drive. And uh, what's amazing is how they were able to come up with uh, such a, a wonderful instrument that provides for us a system by which we can be able to exist together on the road. Especially when you move to Lusaka. It's hard for you to exist without people on the road. Um, they what did people call street rage. Sometimes maybe in the front, people don't know what you're able to see in the front. Maybe the light is red, but because they cannot see. And in fact, you can begin to anticipate. I don't know how people get to know this, but after a while, I think you begin to know how many seconds it takes for the, time, for the, for the light to change. So the, the person on your left and your right can be see them uh, Easily or slowly, ever slightly, trying to move just before the, 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 the light uh, turns to green. But it's what we call the highway code. Without it, um, we would not be able to exist. Without it, we would not be able to know when it's our turn to actually uh, drive. What's amazing in this story that we just read about Jairus is that he had... A crisis. His little daughter 
was sick to the point of death. The Bible tells us about Jairus and how Jairus was um, an administrator in the synagogue. He was someone who had uh, a position, someone who had um, uh, authority, someone who had actually a role in, um, in, in, in the place of worship where he was meeting. But in spite of that role which we had, he had, in spite of all this uh, um, um, uh, uh, the pedigree that he had amassed for himself, for himself, we see him going prostrate before Jesus and asking him to come home. There's something about when you are in need that makes you forget what. Um, even people call you what, uh, how you'd behave anywhere else. Um, emergencies even help make people forget traffic rules. Um, it's only when you reach a, a traffic light that you begin to see how, who's actually patient or who's not patient at all. And uh, if you look at emergency cars, emergency vehicles, ambulances, it's like they have their own sort set, set of, of, of rules that everyone else does not have. What happens when we find ourselves in a place where we are in dire need of relief? Um, it's possible that you can forget all protocols. It's possible that you can forget um, that you need to pray in this situation when you are faced with an emergency. And if there are no road signs in that emergency, you will not know what to do. That is why there is the highway code, which is a rule of engagement. And this, 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 this uh, night, we're going to talk about what this rule of engagement is as you look at the story of, of Jairus. There's a bit of this story which I, uh, I skipped because I, um, I wanted us to just see what we can glean from the scripture. Those who are familiar with this story... Um, the Bible tells us that once uh, Jairus has, got, has caught the attention of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ tells him in verse 24 of Mark chapter 5 that I will go with him. And the Bible says, so he went with him. Amazingly enough, in verse 25, we see someone else being introduced in the story Someone else who was called the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible tells us and begins to uh, tell uh, us her story and that she had been bleeding for 12 years. Verse 26 tells us how much she had invested or how much she had tried to get relief but to no avail. It says she had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet, instead, she was getting worse. Don't forget what the story is about Jairus. Yet, there's somebody who's trying to jump the story. Verse, 20, verse 27 says, When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his clock because she thought, If only I just touched his clock. I will be healed. And just as she had placed the demand on her encounter with Jesus Christ, verse 27 tells us that immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was free from suffering. I don't know what your agenda is whenever you come on a Wednesday service like this. Um, the Bible tells us to seek God while he's near, Isaiah 66 verse 5. It is only when you know where you can find relief or help that you would head in that direction. If there was no uh, evidence, if there was no hope for relief, you would not even think of, of, of that. But we see this woman placing a demand on this encounter she was going to have. With Jesus. I don't know what kind of encounter, what kind of expectation you've placed on this encounter that you are having tonight. This gathering is a supernatural gathering where various people, different destinies, 
have converged uh, at one point at Morehouse. Plot. I almost said the plot. <laughs> Some of you know the plot number. <laughs> you know? And we are gathered, all of us are gathered here with one thing in mind. That we will carry a, a, a testimony that will come out different, changed, transformed. I know it is um, it's women, Women's uh, Day. Uh, congratulations, women. Okay? A round of applause for all the women. No? <laughs> women are special. Without w- women, there will be no men. In fact, there will be no life. I hope you know what the theme for this year is. If you don't know what the theme for this year is, don't expect anything from those that you are expecting something from. Okay? <laughs> but this is a divine gathering. And whilst Jesus Christ was near, this lady had placed a demand that once I get to Jesus, I'm going to get my, my answer. I'm going to get my relief. But can you imagine what kind of thoughts were going, around, going in, in, in Jairus' head at that particular point? We know this daughter is about to die. The Bible tells us that the daughter is sick to a point of death. Yet his detour provided access for someone else to receive their healing. You may be thinking that, uh, you know, maybe it's, it's, a good, it's a good thing that someone got. But if it is you with an emergency, you don't matter. You know, you don't care who else is getting healed. You know, ah, but you know how it is since Pentecost. You've just seen the man of God is on fire at eight, and today is going to access. So maybe we can, uh, we can, we can also maybe imagine that Jairus, that particular point, is saying that he, if he can heal her, he can also heal my my daughter. But there's much more that we get from this story, more than just a, more than just healing. We see Jairus waiting. For his turn, even though he had, he had followed all manner of protocol to get Jesus Christ's attention. Jesus Christ uh, 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 is, is, is like he's distracted by this lady, you know. And I know you know this story because he was surrounded by the crowd. And uh, one woman touches uh, him and he forgets about where he's going. He's just standing. Who touched me? Who touched me? Who touched me? Because he wanted to show us something I'll maybe also teach Jairus something about what he was actually hoping that Jesus Christ would have done for him. When you hear healing of someone else whilst it was you facilitated everything, maybe it was then you invited them to Morehouse, and yet their life seems to be going an upward trajectory (laughs) whilst your own is is, is nose diving. It is hard. You begin to wonder. I thought I was an official in the Jewish you know, synagogue. Am I not important? Is it because I had to grovel at his feet that he's not focusing on this agenda that he has before he focuses on this other lady? But Jesus Christ wanted us and him to also see something unique about how he engages with us, how he relates with us. Don't forget, talk about Jairus. But let's, you know how it is when watching a movie there's a change of scene. So it's a change of scene. I wish I had effects on the keyboard so you can be able to know a change of scene. Okay? <laughs> he begins to focus on the lady with the issue, issue of blood. Her idea was to have an, a, a, a transaction with God. In her head, it didn't matter whether Jesus knew her name or not. So long as she got what she wanted from and because just Christ was saying, who touched me? I'm sure she just touched and she bolted or she ran away. <laughs> because uh, uh, she had no thought or no desire. She wanted to be, got, to, to know, to be, uh, to be known by, by Jesus. But just want, wanted to pause. Because our faith and our walk with God is not one which is a transactional one. Our relationship with, 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 with our father, our interaction with him, is, is not transactional. He focuses more on relation, relationship, than relief. So whilst you may be seeking relief, God will give you that relief that you are asking him for. But by and large, more important than your relief, he's interested in your relationship. So we begin to look at 
his conversation with this lady. And, and the Bible tells us, in verse 31, it says, um, see, the people are crowding against you. He's, see, the people are crowding against you. His disciples answered, yet you, you can ask, who touched me? In verse 32, he begins to say, but just kept looking around to see who had done it. Could it be that even whilst I seated here, you've forgotten about that transaction that happened with God? Could it be that maybe whilst uh, you, you are feeling good about yourself that you forgot about Jesus? I don't know who this is for, but Jesus is still looking for you. Even though he may have gotten your blessing from him, gotten your answer from him, he's still looking for you. Could it be maybe the reason why sometimes, even after God has answered prayer for a job, for example, that we begin to complain about the same job which was an answer to prayer. <laughs> God is still looking for you. He's still looking because he's not interested about the transaction. He's more interested about your relationship with him. So as you draw from him, as you draw virtue from him, are you also seeking him? Are you also desiring him? I pray tonight, even as we look at this, this story about Jairus, that every agenda that you have will change that you don't just start looking, you just you don't just look at the transaction that God can provide for you, but you also look forward to uh, uh, whatsoever is available for you in Him, in your relationship with Him. Amen. So, Bible tells us here in verse thirty-four, sorry, verse thirty-three says, "Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at His feet, trembling with fear." He told, he, uh, um, extremely with fear, okay, told him the whole truth. Remember, we called her the woman with the issue of blood. But in 34, Jesus Christ becomes relation, relational with this lady and says, but he said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. So now this transaction changes, you know, from being just a mere transaction of blessing and healing and prosperity and all the things that we say amen to on a Sunday. Just Christ begins to reach out to her person and calls her daughter. Those people, people who have children who know uh, how, how even if a stranger called you son, you make sure that whatsoever kind of pride that you had, you know, is quenched. If a stranger said, uh, son, can you help me? Or sister, can you, can, can you help me? You begin to see how it actually changes even how we, how we respond. And what's what Chris Christ was doing here? More than just transaction, he's offering relationship to her. But remember, Jairus is still waiting. While all this is happening, Jairus is still waiting. In verse 35. Bible says, that while Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader, and said, your daughter is dead. They said, why bother the teacher anymore? So while all this is happening, um, an emergency is still, is, still, is, still, is still waiting, and just Christ has delayed. What's amazing about delays and stops is that um, whenever you're stopped or your, your, your progression, when you thought what would happen would not happen, um, your fears are exposed. Even though you are, you, you are, you are, you are, you are so confident in your, in your, in your plan, um, so confident in what you, you thought was a perfect plan was going to work, if that is delayed or stopped, your, your, your fears are exposed. You know. But the beauty about fear exposed is that it, it, it creates room for faith. Amen? Where fear is exposed, it creates room for, for faith to be, to be expressed. 
when, just, when Jairus met Jesus Christ, he told him what the plan was. Can you please come to my, hand, my house? Lay your hands on my daughter, and my daughter will be healed. You may have everything figured out, even 2023 figured out. But when, the, when there's a delay in those plans, um, uh, the flow of your plan is exposed. So then whilst you are planning, God wants you to make all your plans, you know. You can't just be living anyhow, you know. But even as we are making our plans, even as we are making all those, all those things that, that we want God to do, do for us. Don't make those plans dependent of him. Just came saying, I'm going to ask Jesus Christ to lay the hands on my daughter. But now the daughter is dead. That plan is flawed because the plan was made outside Jesus Christ. Papa tells us in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 18 that there's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. It is Jesus Christ who makes us perfect in his love. Even whilst we are planning whether your, 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 your six points has led you to where you are now, whether your, 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 your contribution to the business or the company has led you to where you are now, whatever move that you need to make has to be in line with what God uh, uh, has planned for your life. You cannot make plans independent of him. Because it is Jesus Christ who is the author and perfecter of our, our faith. He's the one who holds the blueprint, the script for our lives. Without him, our lives will be full of guesswork. And God doesn't want you to live in a life of guesswork. Bola bet. Sorry for those people who lost money. Uh, seven zero. I think I heard. <laughs> it's possible that you can live your life with surgical precision. If only your plans are not dependent on who you are. Your plans are not dependent on what you've experienced. But all your plans are dependent on Jesus Christ and his will and his will for you. So the crowd, uh, people come to Jairus and they tell him that uh, your daughter actually, actually is dead. And at that particular point, I'm sure... All manner of faith, all manner of plans that he had came crashing down, came crashing down on him. But you know what's amazing? That even when Jairus heard this story, or just Jairus heard, uh, Jairus heard about the death of his daughter, Jesus Christ was still concerned about, about him. Even when the crowd had told uh, Jairus, that why bother a teacher anymore? In verse 36, Jesus Christ turns his attention away from the woman with the issue of blood, her daughter now, <laughs> and tells Jairus. He speaks to him. He did not speak to the crowd. He spoke to Jairus and, telling, and told him, don't fear, just believe. Don't fear, just believe. Don't fear. Just believe. You know what God has promised you this year? Don't fear. Just believe. It is possible that even the, 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 the reality of, of, of your failure is, more, is greater than your faith. Don't fear. Just believe. Even when people can even point back, you have the failure in your hands. Don't fear. Just believe. Just Christ was giving him rules. Of engagement. He was giving him rules of engagement. He did not know what this meant. But just Christ said it anyway. That is why it's great for you to be found where just Christ is. Great to be found where God is speaking. You may never know where your instruction is going to come. But the most important thing that you should always have is to make sure you know where you are. That you know where God is. You know where God's word is being spoken. In crisis, you may forget. In crisis, all these things may be like, you know. But if you 
built enough uh, uh, resource in your heart, in your spirit, your resource pool is full of God's word, full of all the encounters that you've experienced by being God's word. Even if you don't know what to do, God's word will spring out from your heart and give you instruction. And will give you your rules for engagement. Don't fear. Just believe. Can you imagine such a simple statement that nobody else heard, but Jairus heard. And he did not cancel. He did not cancel the plan. He don't say, okay, uh, because my daughter is dead. Uh, let's just go back to where we were. You know, he still went ahead and, told, and took Jesus to where the issue was. Many times when we found ourselves with a calamity, a problem, instead of us going towards God, we find ourselves going away from him because you're disappointed, because your heart is broken. How could he allow me to go through all those years? Was he sleeping? Why did he allow me to experience all that pain? Where was he? He was just waiting for me to go through all that pain. Don't fear. Just believe. Amen. Rules. Rules for engagement. But now the story gets very dramatic. Because when Jairus reaches his house, When Jairus reaches his house, he finds they've already started the funeral. In fact, they've already pitched the tent. <laughs> the gate is open. The chairs are outside. Where is Jairus going to sit? The chairs are outside. <laughs> yeah, so in verse 37. Let's read verse 7. It says, he don't let anyone follow him. That's Jesus Christ. Except Peter, John, and the brother of James. I think Jesus Christ knew what the crowd was going to do. You know, verse 38. It says, but when they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw commotion and the people crying and wailing loudly. I think he went to a Bemba home. <laughs> Because the member who just at the gate at the corner, very before they reach the house, they're doing the life history of that person. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> by the time they reach, by the time they, they, they reach the funeral house, you know, then they throw themselves on the ground. I, it's okay for me to say such a thing because I'm very close to Bemba. I'm Lala by tribe, but, but I think it's Bemba in, in, uh, in uh, NKJV. <laughs> yeah, so just Christ reached the home of the, of, the, of the leader, you know, and so the commotion and the people are crying loudly and, and, and wailing. Verse 39. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion? Why all this wailing? The child is, a, is not dead, but asleep. The child is not dead, but asleep. Verse uh, 40. 40 tells us that they laughed at him because they could see the, the, the result of their faith. They could see the end of what this person had actually gone to collect. You wonder where they got the strength to laugh. Weren't they crying before? And what happens to us most times? When we reach a point... You know, at which I want to break through and maybe what we thought would happen has not happened. Even those that were comforting us, even when you're still believing, they're like, ah, you know, they start laughing at him and, and, and mocking uh, him because of the situation that he found himself in. But the people at that house did not know what kind of instruction that he got from Jesus. They may, ha they had, may, have, they may have been laughing, you know, at him. But he had a word. He had rules for engagement. That don't fear. Just believe. <laughs> don't fear. Just believe. And the story continues. So 
after he put them all out, I think you need to put some people out. Amen. Those people you've confided in, all the people that, that thought were actually your pillar, you know. When they laugh at you, I think it's a sign. When you hear the stories that they actually say something about you, I think it's a sign that you need to put them out. Find yourself some new set of friends that can be there for you, who can be able to remind you that don't, don't fear, <laughs> just believe. Even when things aren't adding up, your career is not adding up, you've been at the alley, I don't know how long. People, are, if people even know your name, then people just show up, the lecturers know your name. It is okay. As long as the Lord has instructed you. Um, one of the things that um, has, has, has helped me through the years, because um, even as times people laugh at us, you know, is we don't know. Maybe it's our mother who's there to us. Have you ever watched uh, America's Got Talent? No, not America's Got Talent. It's idols with wooden mic. Those people who go to, to, to audition, <laughs> they don't know that they're going to appear on the wooden mic segment. Do you know? They don't know. There are a few people who do that they you know, I want wooden mic, but they don't know. Because maybe it's their mother's. Happy Women's Day. Sorry, mother. <laughs> my, my mothers can drive you. They can drive you. They can drive you, you know, and they can expose you. <laughs> you know. So some, there are some people who are like that, you know. They'll be lying to you all this while, you know. And when you try and they're not working, they'll laugh at you. Those are the type of people I'm saying, you throw out. And sometimes... Bible says all things work out together for them who love him and are according to his purpose. Who love him and are called according to his purpose. All things work out together for good for them who love. But sometimes what takes us to where we find ourselves is not God's call, but our foolishness. You know what I mean? So all things work out together for them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. They are, things are working out together for good because... Um, they have, uh, those, whatever happened to them, all those heartbreaks that happened to them, all that pain that they experienced happened in the path of the obedience to God. Not just anyhow. That is why some people have to throw them out. We may say, ah, no, it's okay, maybe one day they'll be useful. It's not everybody who's going to be useful unless they're called according to God's purpose. Amen. So, they laughed at him. And they and, and Jesus Christ said, uh, he, these guys have to have to go have to go out." And Jesus Christ prayed for her. And after Jesus Christ prayed for her, she received her healing. So many times we have our own plans. We have already determined how God is going to work things out. Extraordinary harvest is it's not ordinary harvest, you know. Extraordinary harvest is not ordinary harvest. If it is ordinary harvest, then every plan that you, you have made in your life should have led to an extraordinary harvest. If it's going to be extraordinary, it means that you need to have new rules of engagement. That you, you won't be afraid. You just believe. Just believe what? that your daughter will be healed. Not believe that God is going to, is going to uh, 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 um, lay the hands on the daughter because that speaks of, of um, uh, a plan. It speaks of how you already have uh, designed how this is going to happen. But that's not the year for that. This year is not a year where you begin to actually think that this is what's going to happen. It is where you... You tell God what the end should be like. And let him work out the in-betweens. Amen? Tell him this year's extraordinary harvest. I won't, I won't fear. I'll just believe. Even though your, your, your March is looking like your February, there's nothing that has changed. You won't fear. You just believe. Because you're not interested about the details. What you're just interested about is what the end result is. And this year, 2023, we know that this year is a year of 
extraordinary harvest. So the rules of engagement. Don't fear. Just believe. Don't make your plan. Make your expectation known to God. Say, the Lord is going to be my provider. He's going to be my source, not my sponsor. So I'm telling you, God, you know how sponsors behave. <laughs> God is my source, not my buyer. You know how buyers behave. It's a transaction. Once you graduate, then it's over. Or once that interaction is done, it's over. But God is not my sponsor. He's my source. Amen. And it's my source. I'll make my demands known to him. I'll make my requests known to him. And it doesn't matter how the in-betweens would be. So you're feeling sick in your body this morning, or this, this, this night. You tell God, Lord, heal me. Amen. If he heals you through medication, hey, don't be care about the in-betweens. Don't let your expectations shift. Like Jairus' expectation did not shift. Jairus said, you know, let's go to my house. I know everything at home is dead, but let's go to my house. Because you've told me a word. And that is what God is saying to us tonight. What is your word this morning? I said morning. What's your word tonight? <laughs> What's your word tonight? What's your word for February? The Bible tells us in, um, in Revelation chapter 22 verse, verse 2. It speaks of a tree. Uh, Revelation chapter 22 verse 2. It speaks of a tree um, in the garden that is able to bear 12 crops of fruit. And further it says that that fruit, that tree is able to bear fruit in every month. I don't know what your expectation is. February is gone. But there's this tree in Revelation 22 verse 2 that tells about that it's possible for you always to be in a season where you are harvesting something. And when December comes, you know the Lord was good to you in January. You know the Lord was faithful to you in, 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 in February. You know the Lord in March, you know he came through for you. And when you're looking forward to April, you know that even April has got its own fruit for me. Amen. Can you be upstanding as we come to a close?